Hi, I'm Nate and you're watching Photo Learningism. Let's look at how to set up Caden Live for the first time and get a good look at what a good ideal setup is. What I'm about to show you is fully covered in my latest ebook, Every Tool You Need for Content Creation for Free. The guide also covers additional things that are super useful for getting yourself set up in content creation. And they're all free tools. Everything you need to do from planning a project to recording it and free tools on how to do that and how to configure it. And also editing it and then finally naming it and getting it up to audience. So please do go check that out and that is available for purchase and for making your life very easy for the low time price of five dollars so thank you so much so at the very beginning where do you get Caden live well go to cadenlive.org and there is a handy download button up front uh, just to break into that it does break it down by operating system if you're going to be using this on linux i do recommend the app image that seems to be the most stable for working with all the different plugins and things not to say these other two won't work but there seems to be some issues that have surfaced with getting all the plugins to work properly and app image is the most consistent with that one let's start with going into settings and then configure Caden Live and project defaults. This is the first major area. Now, what I recommend doing is setting the project folder to custom project folder because this makes it very predictable where it will attempt to work by default when it creates a project, when you export something and work with something and create temporary files. This tells it where to do it and you can know where that is. So if you click this button over on the right, you can pick where you want it. I would recommend keeping it in one of the high level locations so it's not hard to dig into every time you need to access it. So once that's selected, that'll be good. One hop down here, I do suggest picking a default frames per second preset. This also has to do with the aspect ratio. So do pay close attention to what you're recording at with the tool that you're using. It should give you choices and options. You want to make sure you match the aspect ratio, the resolution, and also the frames per second because there will be quality issues if you're recording one and then edit in another. It doesn't play nicely that way. Next top down is the video and audio track area. I recommend putting these up quite a bit. I like to start with eight each just because when I get going, I don't want to have to worry about increasing it every time, although you can do that. It's not that hard to add video and audio tracks as you go, just a couple of clicks, but it's just easier if they're already there. So I recommend setting up that, that high so it's ready for you right out of the gate. Next thing I'd suggest is under timeline, Look along the top here at the thumbnail section and make sure these are all checked. The first two really have to do with adding a thumbnail to the beginning of the clip so you can kind of better see what it is. It'll be the first frame, I believe, of the video or audio. Uh, that's very useful just for kind of quick fingering out where you are. The separate audio channels is also very important because that actually maps out the audio waveform and that is super useful for finding a specific point in the audio or for looking for anomalies or working at a specific moment. Uh, make sure those three are checked when you get going and then hit apply and then OK at the bottom to set them all in. Next thing up here is starting to build a structure for how you're going to organize it and to do that you can use folders. That can be done either with project and create folder, or if you simply right click in the project bin, you can select the option to create folder as well. And what I typically do is I name them just the kind of media I'm working on, whether that's video or audio or animation. And you can nest additional folders inside of there, whatever makes sense. If you want to organize by shoot date or by the kind of video it is, maybe some of them are cutaways or B-roll. Once you have that mapped out and done, the next step really is to bring things in. You can simply click and drag things into your folders, which will work just fine. It'll warn you if what you're bringing in is different than your project. That's just a, something you can consider in the moment. I'm not going to worry about this particular one. You can drag it in. You can also go to project and add clip or folder. It's a very similar idea. It's just letting you specifically select the thing or folder of things that you want to bring in. You can load a whole folder if that's easier. Also, you can do the same thing if I right click in the project folder again and I have that option, add clip or folder. Now let's look at the fun stuff. How do you work on it? 
in the editor timeline. So to do that, what I'm going to do is click and drag the thing I want to work on down. And you'll notice as I do that, Caden Live attempts to keep them synchronized, matching the number of video track to the audio track. So as I drag that around, it will move it to that corresponding number in audio. Making cuts is very easy. I could use the cut tool which means I just need to line up that red line with the space I need and then click it. That can be hard though because you have to do two steps of putting the scrubber where you want to figure out where you want to cut and then going on top of that and clicking cut. I find it much easier actually just to be in the selector and as I move the scrubber to the moment that I need, I'll right click and then cut clip and that accomplishes the same thing but just faster. Then you can move around the cuts or pieces as you need to. You'll notice how it still keeps them synchronized or unified between video and audio. If you need to separate them, which is sometimes the case, you can right click it, go to ungroup, and then you're free to move those objects around. If you need to reset them or resynchronize them in the different spacing, all you'd need to do is select one and shift and select the other just to get them both highlighted and then right click and then group clips again and then you're free to move that and it will keep them synchronized the same. So the last thing to really worry about then is how do you get it out? Well, that's pretty simple too. Go to Project and then Render. You would want to pick the compression or the codec that it's coming out, the format really that it's coming out as, and MP4 is the one I'd recommend if I had good success with that. There is a comparable mp4 under 4k as well in case you're aiming high for resolution uh, that's really only useful though if you're coming in with 4k resolution so pick the one that matches the quality and over on the right i do suggest taking a look at the threads uh, making sure that's at least six because that can help speed up the render time just a bit as you go through parallel processing can also be helpful depending on your system that basically takes the threads and doubles it if your system supports it and that makes it go that much faster when it renders out of course also want to make sure the output location is correct it's going to pick the place that you set in your default settings up front but you can change that just by clicking the button on the right and picking a space that makes more sense possibly and then of course naming it uh, before you get everything going. Once that's all ready, click render to file and it will finish the job for you. So really that's the whole process of getting things started up and running in Caden Live to get you on your feet, get working and get it out very quickly. If this was interesting, do consider looking at the book that I mentioned, the ebook, every tool you need for content creation for free. Uh, that's $5 just for the ebook and it is a complete guide of all the tools you would need to get through creating content about how you can plan the project, how you can edit the project, how you can record it, how you can get it out and name it and create thumbnails. All the tools that are mentioned are for free and open source and can be found very easily, downloaded very easily and are available across platforms, whether it's Linux or Windows or Mac. You have a lot of flexibility and this guide walks you through how to set them up and configure them, configure them with best practices. So do check it out. Thank you so much for watching this video and supporting this channel by staying with me and spending your time with me. I hope it's interesting. Consider giving me a thumbs up if it was. Also subscribe if you haven't done that already. And I will see you again at the next video. I love you all. Take good care.